So for me, I actually never wanted to serve a mission. My patriarchal blessing said that I would serve a full-time mission at some point in my life. And as soon as I heard that from the patriarch, I immediately said, it's not gonna happen when I'm 21, because that was before the age change. Um, I'm not going to serve a mission until I'm married, you know, my kids are gone, uh, and I go with my husband. And that's what I stuck with um, for years, um, all growing up. And then when I turned 20, uh, a couple months later, I wasn't making the best decisions in my life. Um, the decisions I were making could have hurt my spirituality a lot more if I had continued in them. And a few months after I turned 20, I was carrying on with school and suddenly this thought popped into my head that said, Christine, you're turning 21 soon. <laughs> you have to decide if you're going to serve a mission or not. And I was stunned and I immediately said, nope, push the thought aside, wasn't going to to allow that to, to stay because I wasn't going on a mission. <laughs> and so that continued. A couple days later, the same thought came to my mind and it was just very distinct and I couldn't figure out where it came from and I wouldn't let myself say, you know, it's Heavenly Father. Um, and I pushed it aside and then it started coming every day, multiple times a day. And finally, I'm really stubborn, <laughs> I'm really stubborn. I said, fine, I'll serve a mission. Um, I called my mom and said, Mom, I'm serving a mission. And she said, great, when are you gonna work on your papers? And I said, I don't know, probably when I get home from school for the summer. And she said, okay. And um, from there on, I got home. My mom and my dad were really helpful in actually getting me to go and do my papers because I was still really resentful at the time. Um, I knew it was what Heavenly Father wanted me to do, but I didn't. I was doing it because I knew he wanted me to, but not because I really wanted to. And that changed, thankfully. Um, but I got my call and was called to the Louisiana Baton Rouge Mission. And in my papers, I had said I wanted to serve stateside in English speaking. I didn't want to go foreign. I didn't want to speak a foreign language. I just wanted to, to basically go and get it done type thing and then come back and go on with my life. And uh, so I got called to Louisiana got called English uh, speaking and was told I'd report in December 2012 and, and that's where the journey began. <laughs> the MTC was incredible. It was everything I needed. I remember we pulled up and there was a missionary waiting for me and I had just enough time to give my parents a hug and then it was, I was gone. And I remember walking into the building and they put the name tag on me and they said, okay, what's your name? And I almost said Christine and, and, they, and then I caught myself and said Sister Falk. But it was so weird to hear myself saying that. Um, but the MTC was exactly what I needed. And it, it was like missionary boot camp for me. I remember one of my teachers when we first all sat down in class, uh, asked us, you know, what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the only thought that came to my mind was the church. I didn't know what else to say. Uh, the church is the gospel. And um, as we continued to learn in the MTC, we learned about how, you no, know, it's faith, repentance, baptism, you know, receiving the Holy Ghost and enduring to the end. And it helped me to to really learn to feel the Spirit and recognize it and understand the doctrines that I've been living my whole life. Uh, so the MTC was really hard. It was a very humbling process, um, but it was the best experience and exactly what I needed to prepare myself to, to go to the field.